Good evening and happy Thanksgiving. I'm Pastor Jedediah from Resurrection, and along with all of my pastoral colleagues here in Monticello, we greet you tonight as we celebrate Thanksgiving together. Good evening, everyone. I'm Pastor Amy Chalupnik from Trinity Lutheran right here in Monticello. Hey, everybody. Pastor Steve Royalty here from Bridgeview Church. Hello. Welcome to Thanksgiving worship. I'm Carrie Binney. I'm the pastor of Community United Methodist Church. Hey, Monticello. It is so good to be together today. Thanks for thanks for being here. Good evening, I'm Pastor David from Change Your Heart Church. And thanks for joining us for this year's Community Thanksgiving Celebration Service. And we are delighted to be a part of this worship opportunity with each and every one of you. We have a wonderful evening planned for you with different music from different churches in the area. We have pastors from around the city greeting and bringing you a message. We have a time of prayer gathered together to give thanks to God. This year has been an unusual year. And yet for many, we now appreciate the simple things. We pray that this season of giving thanks, even in a year where it might feel a little bit harder to do so, will be one that stays rooted in our hearts and sends us forward into this next season of Advent. We come together tonight online. Come before God and offer our thanks and praise and also to ask for God's blessing in the upcoming year. You know, we can't gather together as a whole community as we have every year before this, but that makes us even more thankful. Thankful for the times that we could and thankful for the times that we will be able to in the future. You know, it's often in times like this when things get scarce and times are hard that Thanksgiving just flows out of us for our health, for our families, for our homes, and yes, for our communities. We miss being together, and it will make us even more thankful when we do get together once again. But now's the time of the year to give thanks, not for what could be, but for what we do have. So let's celebrate what God has given. Happy Thanksgiving. And welcome to the Monticello Faith Community Thanksgiving Eve service. So glad that you guys found time to do this. I pray you are blessed in our service. Let's worship together today. Thank you for being a part of our worship today. Welcome to worship.
Good evening, I'm Abby Salmon, the Worship and Music Director at Resurrection Lutheran Church. We want to include a time in the service during our next song for you to give an offering. This has been a difficult season for many of you, and it's been a difficult season for many of our local churches as well. The staff I work with are amazing people who are able to do a lot with a little, and we want to make sure that we are still able to continue to bring worship experiences to you virtually and in person when we're able to come back together again if your church is not meeting currently. Be blessed as you give this evening. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Let's lift our hearts and worship.
Hello, Monticello, and, and welcome. It is really good to be with you this evening. Uh, my name is Michael Gross. I am a pastor here in the community, have been for about 20 years. I serve at Cory Community Church, and it is a privilege to be able to come together. I'll be at virtual, but we're still together. And this is, this is a really rare thing in, in our world today, where multiple churches come together and worship together, kind of putting their differences aside for the, for the glory and honor of our King, Jesus. So it, uh, it's a privilege to be with you uh, today. So what I'd like to do before we get started, if we could just pray, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask God to, to bless this time and uh, to maybe open up our hearts and our minds. So if you would, just, just join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, it is, it is a wonderful thing that we can come together. And Lord, wherever two or more are gathered, you are, you are with us. And so, God, we are honored by your presence here. Lord, would you open up our hearts and our minds? Would you speak directly to us, Father, and remind us why we can be thankful in these days? You are so good, God. We praise you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, so we're, we're talking about being thankful because Thanksgiving is tomorrow. And it's a little ironic because I think this is a time where, where a lot of us are focusing on negative. And we're seeing the world and we're going, why in the world would I be thankful? Right? I mean, I've got, I've got political tension. I've got ethnic tension. I've got COVID tension. I mean, there are, there are things I just can't do that I really want to do. I, I, I can't be with my friends right now. My school is virtual. My gym is closed. I have to wear a mask everywhere I go. I can't even go out to my favorite restaurants anymore. I, I'm not working at all or I'm working too much. I've lost somebody really close to me during this time. <laughs> my, my trip got canceled. And now my, my Thanksgiving has to be virtual. And we ask the question, what have I got to be thankful for? Now, I want to remind you that, that, this, that the hardship that we're experiencing, it might be new to us, it might be different to us, but this isn't new to this world. You know, Jesus, Jesus said this. This was a promise. He said, in this world, you will have trouble. And then he said this. This is the, the hope comes. He says, but, but take heart. Take heart, because I've, I've overcome the world. I mean, it, it might be hard in this moment, but, but I'm not leaving you alone. I'm with you. I'm going to walk with you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you. I am with you, even to the very end of the age. That's, that's the promise. Now, the challenge, though, for us is most of us have this, this tunnel vision, and we're, we're focused only on the negative, on what we don't have. And this is why the Bible says this 139 different times. It says, be thankful. It's a reminder to us to, to be thankful. The Apostle Paul, who wrote much of the New Testament, he says it as, as much as anybody else. I'll just read one of, one of the instances. This is in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. He says, always rejoice. This one, this one hits home for me. This is what our life should look like. Always rejoice, constantly pray, and in everything, give thanks. Not, not, just, not just when the sun is shining, but, but in, in every situation, give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus, to be a thankful people. Now, you might be struggling with how you're going to be able to turn that corner in these days. So I want to I turn our attention to the writing of King David. We're going to go Old Testament here. We're going to look at one of the Psalms, one of the, the songs of the Bible so, so David, David, who was the beloved king of Israel, when Israel was at its height of power and prestige. But he also, while he knew that power and he knew that prestige, he also knew pain. He also knew heartache. He knew what it was to be hated, what it was to be hunted. We have much to learn. So if you have your Bibles, open up with me to Psalm 103. And as we read this psalm, this song of King David, I want you to listen to the reasons for, for David's praise. We read this. Praise the Lord, O my soul. With all that's within me, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Do not forget all his kind deeds. He 
is the one who forgives all your sins, who heals all your diseases, who delivers your life from the pit, who crowns you with his loyal love and compassion, who satisfies your life with good things so your youth is renewed like an eagle's. Now, as, as we read that song, do you see, do you see what God did? Do you see what, what David is highlighting? I mean, why, why should we be thankful? Well, because <laughs> straight out of the chute, David says, because your sins are forgiven. God did that. God, God forgave you. Have, you. have you thought about that lately? Have you ever taken that one step further maybe and thought about what it would be like if God didn't forgive you? If you went to God one day and you say, God, would you, you know, I'm, I'm just going to confess my sin before and you lay it out. And God kind of comes back and he says, well, ah, you know, you've reached your sin limit. I'm sorry, I can't forgive you anymore. Praise God that that's not the answer that God gives us. If we read through the whole psalm, if you read down into verse 10, David writes, he does not, God does not deal with us as our sins deserve. He does not repay us as our misdeeds deserve. They deserve death, but God doesn't give us that. He covers our sin with the blood of Jesus and gives us life. We can praise God. We need to praise God for that. Forgiveness is the first item that David highlights as reason for his soul praising God. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Our God is gracious. Allow that truth to, to, to cultivate a grateful heart within you. I want to encourage you in these next days, may, maybe, maybe, maybe tomorrow, think of, think of what life would have been like had God not forgiven you. I mean, may, maybe play back the last few days, the last few weeks, maybe the whole year from last Thanksgiving until this Thanksgiving. How have you been forgiven? See, too often we take God's forgiveness for granted. This is a gift. God has done this for us. Let us never forget what it was like to live under the guilt of sin. You've been pardoned because of Jesus. Be grateful, be thankful. David continues, he says, he heals, God heals all your diseases. Now, right away, when we read this, most of us think of God healing us physically, and God does that, right? God can do that. But sometimes God doesn't do that. And this is where, this is where it gets hard for us, right? And we start asking questions about our God. God, why didn't you do that? God, where were you? Why didn't you show up? This is what I wanted. This is what I needed. I thought you healed all diseases. Sometimes he doesn't. And we walk through that valley of death. And this is real. And, it, and quite frankly, it comes for all of us. There's real loss in this world, real brokenness. But the promise is that God walks with us through our brokenness, through this valley of the shadow of death. But, but I want you to, 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 to step back and get a bigger picture here because, because ultimately death isn't the enemy. That, that's not the true enemy. I mean, the limitations of our physical bodies, they're not the real enemy. Sin, sin, that, that which can destroy our soul forever, that is the real enemy. Satan, Satan is a real enemy. But, but here's what we know, that, that Jesus, through his death on the cross and through the resurrection, he took care of both of those. Take heart, because I've overcome the world. See, in, in this passage, David isn't really talking about disease of the body. He says, he heals all your diseases. Now, now, who is the your referring to? See, David is preaching to his soul. He's talking to his soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. See, God has healed you, soul, of, of all of your diseases. The, the, the inner diseases, the, the sin within us, the, the spite and the pride, and the rivalry, and the hatred, and the stubbornness, and the bitterness, and the need for revenge. God has taken all of that. He's taken that sin upon himself. He's healed us. He's washed us and made us clean. The psalmist said, I've experienced that. You can experience that. 
Remember, think back on, on the healing that God has done in your life over, over these past days, over this past year. I can tell you that, that God is faithful. He's come into my life and he's done kind of an inside work multiple times, work that only he and I know about. And I praise him for that. What, what a gift this is when we remember. Then David speaks a third truth to his soul. He says that he delivers your life from the pit, O soul. Now, th this reference to, to a pit, literally, the word means ruin or, or destruction or corruption. So David is saying that, that God redeems your life, O soul, from, from ruin. He, he pulls you out of the pit. Do you remember what it was like to be in the pit? Do you remember what it was like to be, to be separated from God? God didn't leave you there. He pulled you out of the muck and the mire. We, 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 can't, we can't forget. Some of you guys have been saved so long now. It's, it's this distant memory. We can't forget what it was like to be in the pit. This is such a powerful thing for us. The, the psalmist says this, that, that I, I rely completely on the Lord. And he turned toward me and he heard my cry for help. He lifted me out of the watery pit, out of the slimy mud. He placed my feet on a rock and he gave me secure footing. My God did that. He does that. Do you remember what it was like to be stuck in the slimy mud? Do you remember who you used to be apart from the saving grace of Jesus, the jokes that you used to laugh at, the people you used to hurt, the means that you used to cope with the sin in your life. That's the pit. But praise be to God for his, his abundant love. He heard your cry and he lifted you out of the pit. But, but not only that, it's not like you're just dripping with mud. He comes along and, and then he, he places this, this crown of loving kindness and, and compassion upon you. See, when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are welcomed into the kingdom of God. You're no longer an outsider. You're not, you're not on the outside looking in. You're, you're not an outcast or a foreigner. No, you are now a son adopted in, a daughter adopted in with full access to your heavenly Father. He crowns you with loving kindness and compassion. Give thanks, friends. Give thanks. But he's not, he's not quite done. David wrote in verse 5, This is the God who, who satisfies your life, your soul, with, with, with good things. So your youth is renewed like an eagle's. Now, now youth... Youth was a while ago. But David writes that, that this is what God does for us. He, he restores us. He renews us. He satisfies our soul. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. He satisfies us with that which is good. The, the idea is that he, he provides what is enjoyable and satisfying and our, our, youth, our youth is renewed like an eagle. So I, I want you to think, in, in the Old Testament, when, when an eagle is, is mentioned, it's often used as a reference to, to something that was old, that was used up, that was neglected or tired. But it becomes fresh. It becomes vital once again. I, I think the wrinkles are going to stay, but inside me something is changing my soul is restored and refreshed and it rises up with wings, with the wings of an eagle. That's the picture and that's, that's the promise. This is what our God does. He restores, he renews, he redeems, he makes all things new. So be thankful, soul. Be thankful, friend. You know, I, I think in the natural world, we catch glimpses of this. I mean, sometimes the sun shines and, and the wind is, is this soft, gentle breeze. And all is well in the world. Those are moments. But I think the vast majority of time that we spend on this planet, I mean, the, the storm is raging all around us and the waves are crashing and it's chaos. But, but the promise is that deep within us, in our soul, 
God who is praised in this passage. He continues to do a work. He's lavishing his love upon you. He's, he's holding you close and he's walking with you through the storm. And in that we give thanks to our God for his greatness, for his power, and for his grace. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. All right, so, so tomorrow is, is Thanksgiving. And some of you might have, have a struggle turning this corner. And so I, I, I want to help you. I want to I encourage you to take a little deeper walk over these next days. Now, when I want to do that, there's this place that I go in Monticello, uh, just up on top of Monty Hill, just, just a little bit above the Methodist Church. And I get up there and, I, and I'm, I'm still before God and I look out over our community and I, I think of the people I know. And God refreshes me in those moments. I speak to him and I listen intently for his voice. Well, this week, I'd, I'd like you to take a climb like that. And now maybe you don't physically walk up Mountie Hill. Maybe you're just doing this in your mind. Maybe it's in a quiet place in your home. Maybe you go on a walk. But I, I, I want you to be still before God and allow him to renew you, allow him to refresh you, allow him to remind you of all that, that he has done. I want you to think intentionally about people that God has put into your life and to give thanks for those people. And, and, and maybe, maybe some of those people, maybe they're not here anymore. Maybe they're with him. Give thanks that they're with him. For all eternity, they're with him. Give thanks that we will see them once again. Give thanks for the time that we had with them. And then, and then I want you to just think about all that God has done. His vast, marvelous, unending, truly infinite blessing that he pours out on your life. And in that moment, all alone, just you and God, give thanks. You have so much to be thankful for. Because when we turn our hearts towards giving thanks, it changes everything else around us. We see more clearly, we hear more clearly, we understand the work that God is doing in us more clearly. My promise is, because this is his promise, is that he will meet you there in that moment. He will lift you up and your soul will be blessed. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Be thankful, friends. We have so much to be thankful for. Would you guys pray with me? Let's, let's, let's start this off by, by giving thanks. Heavenly Father, God, in these moments, wherever we are, Lord, we, we praise you. We give you all glory and honor. You are worthy of our praise. Lord, forgive us when we, when we can't see, when we can't remember, when we're not reminded of your greatness and your wonder and all that you have done in our lives, that, that the very breath that we have is because of you that the food on our table is because of you, that, that the, the, the blood pumping through our veins is because of you, that the promise of eternity is because of you, that forgiveness is because of you. We give thanks. Bless you, Lord. My soul is refreshed and renewed. Would you do that, God? Would you remind us of your beauty, of your greatness, of your wonder? May we be known as a people of thanks. We praise you, God. And we thank you in Jesus' name. We remember with thanksgiving the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, who offered us salvation and new life. We pray, Lord, as many already have for those who are suffering from COVID-19, uh, those who have had the virus, those who have been affected by the virus, and those who have lost someone to the virus. Uh, we ask your arms of comfort to come around all of them. We ask for healing, Lord, through the blood of your son, Jesus, on all those who are experiencing the symptoms and the sickness that comes along with this COVID. And Father, we are grateful, though, for all the things that you have brought us through. 
and thankfulness and praise because of what you're going to bring us through. You've never left us or forsake us. You've always loved us. And we have no doubt in our hearts, mine especially, that you're going to bring us through not only the COVID and the pandemic, but all the things that the world is facing right now. And it's through his love that we can continue to extend ourselves, whether it's in person or across the airwaves and video waves. And we look forward to seeing uh, many wonderful stories of maybe conversion and and healing. And even those who have who have suffered that came through and are going to come through with a deeper relationship with you. So I lift these few things up to you, Lord Jesus, because you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and we love you. Thank you and praise you, Lord, for how good you've been. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that we have as a community. We thank you so much for this time of worship together as people of differing faith communities, but one common bond in Jesus Christ. And in remembering, O oh Lord, stir up within each one of us the desire to do your work of your willingness for action, that we may declare your mercies throughout our area. We pray for the leadership of this community, for those who are in the schools, preparing for the distance learning models. We pray for the students and families at home, in homes who are trying to get all the pieces together and make plans for this new day that's approaching. Lord, we pray that your name would be just made known throughout this entire region, Lord, as this year we pause, uh, even on a difficult, troubling year for many, we pause, Lord, and just say thank you for, Lord, the many good things that you have given us, Lord, and we pray and ask that you would continue to lead us and guide us, Lord, as we continue to navigate, Lord, these coming days and coming months and even years, Lord, we, we thank you that your voice is clear. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for all the things you've given us. Here we pray. We pray for all of your people everywhere because we are a hurting people. But God, you remind us that despair and hurt and illness and pandemic are not the final word. Instead, yours is a truth of hope, of life, of resurrection. May we be a people of new life. May we be a people who shine hope to everyone we meet. Lord, I agree in prayer with all of my brothers and sisters. Lord, we give you thanks for all that you have given and all that you are. Lord, there is so much that we are missing this year. But we give you thanks for the priorities that you have raised to the surface. Our love for you, our love for one another, and our love for the world. Thank you. We thank you for all that you have given. In Jesus' holy and mighty name, amen. What a wonderful evening of giving thanks. Hopefully you were blessed during this time and you can reflect back on all that God has given to you in this past year. As we look forward, it certainly seems daunting and even unknown, but God knows he's gone before us. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so he will walk us through to the very future he has in mind. Let me send you with his blessing. Now on this Thanksgiving, the Lord blesses you and he keeps you. The Lord's face shines upon you and is gracious to you. The Lord looks upon you with his favor and he gives you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Thanksgiving. God bless you.